probably believe that PMO helps you in times of stress. You come home from a day of work and you think, fuck, I'm pissed off, I'm annoyed. Work's done my head in, school's done my head in. PMO doesn't help you with stress, even temporarily. Any stress relief that you do experience comes from your own mind when you PMO. But then you blame PMO for the stress relief that you'd given yourself in your mind. The truth is that PMO porn it's just a dumb video, it's a lifeless video. It cannot change your thoughts, it cannot change stress to non-stress. What happens is you PMO, you feel relaxed mentally because you do it to yourself, and then you blame the porn and that inflates the value of porn so high such that you now view porn as something that you need. This is ultimately what creates really strong urges, which is actually just a really strong desire for PMO. Why? Because you've inflated the value so high. Why? Because you made this misattribution. You said, I'm going to PMO, it's going to make me de-stress. So you PMO, you let go of your stress mentally, and then you blame the video for doing it. You think the video is some mind-boggling, maddening thing that can just take away your stress like an aspirin can take away a headache. Can't do that. It's completely different. In this video, I'm going to talk about how it's happened like that, how to undo this misattribution error, and then no longer feel as though you need PMO for stress relief because guess what you won't feel like you need something that you know cannot help you by the way everything that I'm explaining in this video is coming from the freedom model for addictions it's the best book on how to quit any addiction it's in the description it's for free they're the experts they've been doing this for 30 years helping people with drugs and alcohol literally for like 30 years they're the experts they've written the book I'm a young guy I've read their book I've applied it to PMO I've now quit PMO effortlessly and MO as well and I'm here to just teach you exactly the same thing so if you want to know more like the video for the algo subscribe and let's get fucking into it okay so I made this quick flow chart here on the screen let's take a look it starts off with I want stress relief you know quite natural I want stress relief this happens all the time in life your life can be stressful everyone feels stress so so you feel the stress relief, so you use PMO, and then you feel an emotional reprieve, right? You feel an re emotional relief due to a reprieve, but then you give porn the credit when really it was your own mind. So this might be the case of what I, I explained this in another video, but pretty much you might be like, okay, I've had a tough day at work and I get home and I've got this social obligation later on in the evening. I get home from work, I don't want to go to the social obligation, I'm already pissed off. I wish there was some way for me to get out of going to the social obligation, PMO. Because if I PMO, and I used to think like this, this was something that I would do frequently. You think to yourself, okay, well, if I PMO, then I'm going to feel like shit. And if I feel like shit, I definitely won't want to go. And I can, I would just guilt-free, just be like, no, I can't come. That's what I would literally do. It's such a strange piece of logic, but you might have been going through this as well. But then I would give porn the credit. I was the one who made that decision to PMO. I was the one who let myself be guilt-free in not going to the social obligation. But somehow I gave PMO the credit. I thought the video was doing it i thought that the video was somehow going into my mind and making me feel guilt-free sounds ludicrous and it blows my mind that i could fall for such a stupid thing but there we go all right so that's one thing again you're getting that emotional relief you're getting that reprieve but pmo isn't doing it so as you can see as we go through here right this arrow points to this the reprieve you give pmo the credit and then it leads to the conclusion false belief formed right porn did this porn is a genuine solution for times of stress loneliness and sadness okay so you've what you've done there is you've learned this is the human process of learning you had a problem you found a solution and now that solution you view in high regard you inflate the importance of it imagine you if you'd never really use like shower gel before or let, let's think of a proper example let's say you didn't have a warm jacket and then you bought a warm jacket you bought one from the shop you come back you wear it you think this is warm Next time you go out, you feel cold, but you put the jacket on. Jacket makes you feel warm. So now you remember, you learn that the jacket is your solution to coldness. Next time you go out, you feel cold, you put the jacket on, boom. And then you automatically start using the jacket over and over again. You don't even think. You form a habit. This is what's happened. And by the way, habit does not mean compulsion. You are not compelled. You just learned something. And just as you've learned something, you could unlearn it if you learn the truth. That's what happens when you learn truth. Lies go away right so this is what's going on that's one path this left hand path right here yeah the right hand path here i feel emotional relief due to a distraction but then i give porn the credit really it was my own mind okay so same thing what is a distraction how is a distraction different from a reprieve a distraction is literally anything that you focus your attention on that isn't your stressful life so let's say i've got a really stressful life and again, I had that bad day at work or that bad day at school and I'm stressed out and I'm looking for a solution. I could do this, a ah, bit of ASMR. That's a distraction, right? Because just then as I take that sip of tea and I focus on it, because I'm focusing on the tea, I'm no longer focusing on my stressful life. The key thing is you might say, you know, porn is way more distracting than tea. You know, porn really grabs your attention. But the thing is you control your attention. You choose to put your attention on PMO because 
you believe that PMO is this ultimate distracting, stress relieving, magical tool. Once you realize that you're the one who's distracting you using whatever medium it might be, it might be a hot drink, it might be porn, it might be YouTube videos, it might be talking to a friend, going for a walk, going to the gym, eating food. You can go from having a unhealthy distraction that you think, man, these are costs I'm not willing to pay anymore, to going to a other distractions like just distracting yourself with your own thoughts. You could just be you could literally, I do this sometimes. Now that I've, you know, now that I quit PMO, I started to do this. If, I, if I'm just feeling stressed and I just need a little reprieve, I need a little relax, I will literally guilt-free be like for the next like 30 seconds, I'm just going to forget everything. And I literally just close my eyes and zone out like this. And I just distract myself in my own thoughts. It just gives me that little, that little respite. And I'm not doing this to replace porn. I'm not doing it to replace it. Because I don't, because in order to replace something, it has to be something of value that you can replace. You can't replace something that's useless. You can only replace something that has some utility to begin with. So when you understand that porn has no utility in terms of emotional relief, why? Because it's you doing it the entire time and then blaming porn, you now no longer view porn as a solution. And because you don't view it as a solution, you can't replace it. It's a complete dismantling and recognizing the truth of what substances can and can't do for you. No substance can stress relieve you, even alcohol, even weed, right? It's these mechanisms of mental stress relief that we do to ourselves with our own volition. And this isn't something you need to believe, you know, prove me wrong or, or have some counter arguments. Is it, how is it the case that physical things can de-stress you? Because stress is a product of the mind, right? If I'm thinking about man, I haven't got much money in my bank account and that's stressing me out. How does porn, how does masturbation turn that thought of, damn it, I don't have much money in my account into, oh, I have loads of money in my account. Or, oh, it's not that big a deal. How does it do that to you? How does the video, the lifeless video do that to you? It can't do that. It's it's incapable of doing that. But because you experience the stress relief, you think, oh, it must be doing it. God knows how it's doing it, but it's doing it. I'm feeling it. I'm, it's doing it. Again, the error on the screen, we'll have a look. False belief. Yeah, that's the consequence. Okay, so what happens next? What's the conclusion to all of this? Okay, you won't feel like you need what you know cannot help you. This is my new favorite quote from the Freedom Model. Again, all of this is in the Freedom Model, so please check that book out. It's goated. It's the, they're, they're the experts. I'm like a adaptation. I've adapted this to PMO because that book's about drugs and alcohol, but really it's completely cross-applicable. So as I said, as the book says, you won't feel like you need something that you know cannot help you. If I learn that my gym supplement that I've got actually isn't doing anything for me and it's just kind of this useless, pointless, it doesn't do anything. If I come to know that, I won't feel like I need it anymore. You know, when you have crutches, let's say if you've ever broken a limb, you have crutches temporarily, you don't feel like you need your crutch when your leg gets better. Why? Because if your leg's better, you know I can walk now without the crutch. And because you know I don't, the crutch is useless to me now because I can walk, you don't feel like you need it. But when your leg is broken, you're like, fuck, I can't get anywhere without this crutch. You know you can't get anywhere without this crutch. So therefore you feel like you need the crutch. When you learn that porn isn't doing this emotional relief stuff that you want to believe that it was, and you come to that realization, hey, it was my mind. It's been my mind this whole time. You won't feel like, oh, I need it. Or, oh, it would be useful. Once you realize it has no utility within this domain, you simply won't feel like you need it for that reason. You'll feel like it's, I don't need it. I can just do it by myself. I can do the emotional relief on my own. That doesn't mean I'm replacing it. You can't replace something that had no value to begin with. Do you get, does that make sense? I hope it does. And so look, the truth is, I did this voluntarily at the same time as watching porn. So I made a misattribution error, which gave the substance credit for something it simply cannot do. And this is very, very, very goated, right? This whole thing, this whole concept is goated. Again, I did not invent this at all. The Freedom Model did. You voluntarily put your attention on PMO and therefore away from your stressful thoughts. You can do that with anything. You were doing it with PMO. The stress relief you experienced when you did PMO was you, not the screen, not the, not the physical masturbation. It wasn't. It can't do that. Physical stuff cannot do that. This is why all drugs and alcohol, or like drugs, alcohol, so many things have this stereotype of being addictive. Why? Because they all have this distractive value. So anything that has a physical buzz, you see people form addiction communities around them, even something like self-harm, right? That's physical pain, which people focus on, and then they that distracts them from their stressful thoughts. And they begin to believe that the self-harm itself is something magical that can take away stress. I didn't understand why people would self-harm before. I didn't understand it. But now I understand because it provides a physical sensation that people can choose to focus on. And if people come to believe that that physical sensation that they're choosing to focus on isn't something to do with them, but something to do with the substance, now the substance has inflated value. Do you get it? Same with cigarettes, same with alcohol, same with food, same with exercise, right? You mustn't, like, some people are like exercise freaks because they're like, oh, I need it to de-stress. No, you don't. You're just focusing on it. You're doing so, you're getting your mind off it. The exercise itself isn't a unique solution to stress. 
neither is food, neither is alcohol, neither is drugs, neither is porn, neither is hot chocolate, neither is, you know, self-harm, neither is listening to music. They're not unique solutions. They're just something that you can focus on, that you can focus on. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, I'm liking this. This is feeling good. I'm thinking this is true or whatever. Read the chapters 17 and 18 in the Freedom Model. That's where it goes into detail about this more. That's where you can learn about this. This is absolutely key. So let's review the flow chart one more time, okay? So you want stress relief. So you use porn. You have that reprieve. You feel that reprieve because you give it to yourself. But then you give porn the credit when really it was you. And because you give porn the credit, the value goes way up, right? Same thing with the distraction mechanism, okay? You're doing it. But porn, you're giving it the credit, value goes way up. And because the value for porn now is up here within your mind, again, perceived benefit, within your mind, the value is really high. And something that has really high value to us is something that we will feel motivation for. So once you realize the credit you've given to porn actually is you should be giving it to your own mind, the perceived value of porn goes down a shit ton. You realize that you are miraculous. You are the one who's been doing it. You're the one who's capable of doing it without the substance or even with other substances. So you can just do that and then you don't have to pay the heavy costs of PMO anymore and you can have your cake and eat it. That's what's beautiful about this. You can have your cake and eat it. And you might be thinking, isn't that convenient? Isn't this little gimmick convenient? Here's the thing. This isn't a gimmick. This isn't a method. This is the truth. The reason why the truth sets you free in this instance is because the truth of the matter is addiction doesn't exist. And so really the freedom model isn't really a method. It's just the truth. It's the undoing of myth. And as soon as the myths are undone, you're just free to go how you were at the beginning before you learned about NoFap. This is taking you back to before NoFap when you were just happily jerking off. Apart from now, instead of happily jerking off because you want to, you might think, okay, maybe I don't want to. And if you don't want to, you're done, okay? So I hope all of that makes sense. You can rewind the video and rewatch and watch, read chapters 17 and 18 in TFM. Free link in the description, really good. Study those chapters, really, really, really powerful. And like this video for the algorithm because we need to share this as much as possible to everyone else. Get the truth out there. And subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to be uploading a shit ton more, okay? That's it.